Your responses are interjections Leave your answers to our questions And we'll talk about them away Grr. Arg. Ugh. That's a backstab ah. That's a lot of backstab It's the meanest, dirtiest, most vile Most likely to seriously put poison in the punch Kill on sight Top 10 commanders that you don't want to see. The video starts right now. Special thanks to our Patreon supporters who power our channel. Check out our Patreon for monthly giveaways, exclusive content, and even a starring role in our fan fight series. Link in the description below. Hello and welcome to the day. Thank you for spending your time with us. I'm Jake. I'm Joel. Welcome back to another episode of Jake and Joel are Magic. We are going to get into the meanest commanders in the year 2021. But before we do, if you would, consider if you like the video by the end of it, hitting that like button. And if you don't like the video by the end of it, hit that dislike button. That's the best way to support the channel with just the click of a button. If you do like Jake and Joel, head on over to Patreon. You can support the channel there on a deeper level. Let's talk about the top 10 meanest, most vile, evil. You want to pay your opponent $100 to please just not play them tonight because you're trying to have a good night. Those are the commanders that we're talking about today. Let's get into the cards. We asked you on our community tab what are the meanest the most kill on site commanders we've got eight responses from you the community and then jake have our two picks for the year 2021 at the end of this list so make sure you stick around for those but jake let's start off with the newest boogie lady in mtg turgrid we had alan solarburn eric luis charlie hugo kazuto chris so many people respond back and say well duh it's turgrid god of fright two black three other for a four or five legendary god with menace it says whenever an opponent sacks a non-token permanent or discards a permanent card you may put that card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control she's got another side jake but who freaking cares i was just gonna say did you know that turgrid is a mdfc from <laughs> all time it's one of the mdfcs it has a second side to it but you wouldn't know because the front is just so gosh darn attractive thank god it's only one color because it really helps to be able to rein in the power level just a little bit there's a theme with these meanest commanders a lot of them not every single one of them but a lot of them and turgrid is like the flag bearer for this theme and that theme is lends itself to non-fun ways of play the rack. turgrid god of yeah. fright exactly turgrid has this ability that is so punishing and so brutal and you go oh that's mischievous i can't wait to control that ability but then your opponents have to play against it and i guarantee you it is not fun anybody who's ever had their hand looked at by a spell anybody who's ever had their permanent yoinked by anything Turgrid does all of that. Like Jake said, discard, sacrifice, group, slug, aristocrats, very powerful strategies like this. And yeah, honestly, Jake, the fact that it's only one color is the reason that That's right. it is probably not more played than it is. Yeah, you better hope you're playing against Bill Murray from Little Shop of Horrors because your opponents need to be a masochist to an uh enjoy playing against Turgrid. Next up we have Urza, Lord High Artificer, two blue, two other for a one four. I don't need to read it to you. The card is just absolutely brutal. Joel, who commented that Urza was on the uh, the meanest list So many here? people. Fabio, CR, Jansen, Jason, Lazarus, Charlie, all came back responding that the Lord High Artificer was the meanest commander in the year 2021. Yeah, it's just one of these commanders that, you know, you play a pile of fast mana and then you combo off. You win in a degenerate way, mostly like a non-interactive uh kind of like feels bad kind of way it lends itself to a lot of the most degenerate spells like force of will force of negation this is the testament of blue man blue just always gets some of the craziest stuff artifact strategy storm strategy infinite strategies this is one that i think will be around forever and looked down upon as one of the meanest. Yuriko the Tiger Shadow's been around for a while though. One black, one blue, one other for a human ninja. It's got Commander Ninjutsu for a black and a blue, which is returning an unblocked attacker you control to your hand and put it onto the battlefield from the command zone, tapped and attacking. The big part here is whenever a ninja you control deals combat damage to a player, reveal the top card of your library and put that card into your hand. 
Each opponent loses life equal to that card's converted mana cost. I was just talking about the staples of good EDH cards. This is card advantage. It's basically card draw. And it also says each opponent loses life, which a good commander card makes most often than not. That's right. Each opponent really is. Uh, those are the magical two words on this card. And right. it's hitting all of them. So yeah, very attractive card suited up with Lightning Greaves or Whisper Silk Cloak. Make sure that it's getting through. This card can get out of hand. Card advantage. Each opponent taking life. It's absolutely ridiculous. Beep Boop Kendo and Sebastian, thank you for commenting, Eureka. Combined you're with any kind of uh, it, Sensei's Top or Scry effects, and you're really playing this card to its best potential. Yeah, absolutely. Eureka can be very strong. Much like our number four on the list, Yidris Maelstrom Wielder. Yes, all colors here except for white for a 5-4 trample. Whenever Yidris Maelstrom Wielder deals combat damage to a player as you cast spells from your hand this turn, they gain Cascade. So we all know Maelstrom Wanderer and just how powerful Maelstrom Wanderer is and how powerful Cascade is. I mean, free spells are great. And then when you get more and more Cascade triggers, I mean, why not? You've got every color you really need to make this thing pop off right here. You've got ramp, you've got kill, you've got card draw, and you've got haste. And that's what I would want to build Yidris into, you know, a hasty shell where as soon as we can land it, get the damage wherever we can get it, and then start popping off. Casting spells, making a ton of mana, casting a bunch of stuff. Cascade, I think people are like, wow, that's strong. And then when it starts happening, you're like, this is even stronger than I anticipated. It's just it, like it gets out of your hands really quickly. and. Right. The key here on this card is just trample, right? Alan and Harrison commented on there about Yidris definitely being on the meanest list, so we appreciate that. Our next one, Crick, Charlie and Echo Scorpion Gaming had strong opinions about the Son of Yogmoth. Three black Phryxian mana and four for a legendary horror minion 2-2 two -two with lifelink. For each swamp in a cost, you may pay two life rather than pay that mana, so it turns all black mana symbols into Phryxian mana symbols for you. And whenever you cast a black spell, put a plus one, plus one counter on Crick so that Crick grows, life links when he attacks or blocks, and gains back the life that you're spending to cheat out spells. Life gain, free spells. This is, again, what you want on a good EDH card, ways to cheat mana. This is one of those like combo generals as well. You know, isn't this one that really synergizes with Doomsday? It's like you get your Doomsday pile going and then the fact that you're able to uh, pay life to pay those costs really allows you to go crazy with this card. Yeah, exactly. Again, thank you, Charlie and Echo Scorpion Gaming, for that note. Robin Bryan came up with Chulane Teller of Tales. Jake, put draw a card on a commander and it makes it good. Am I right? Yeah, pretty much. One blue, one white, one green, two other for, for Chulane. Legendary creature, human druid, vigilance, two, four. Whenever you cast a creature spell, draw a card. Then you may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield. If that wasn't enough, you can pay three and tap to return target creature you control to its owner's hand. So it's just a really good toolbox commander in really good colors, right? So it's got a little bit of a blink effect going on. Uh, there's velocity as well, like we've already talked about, just being able to draw cards and then getting lands onto the battlefield as well. So there's some ramp. It protects itself. So it's like it protects its commander cost from going up just a fantastic card oh yeah i actually had not noticed that you can return target creature you control you can return chew lane back yeah. to your hand i had never noticed that just to you protect learned... it from a board wipe and then <laughs> yeah. just be like well no i don't want it to cost seven i want to make sure that it stays costing five because i want to be able to combo off play it protect it yeah it's good it's you learn strong. something new every day seven mana memnark Big old wizard legend daddy that's been around for a long time. User don't want your milk said this is the meanest. Seven mana for an artifact creature, wizard legend four five. You can pay blue blue one to have a target permanent become an artifact in addition to its other types. And you can pay one blue three other to gain control of target artifact. Jake, nobody likes their stuff being yoinked. And artifacts is a hella strong strategy in EDH. Memnark says, I'll take both of those. I'll only use the color blue, but I am going to pick a strong color nonetheless to make my mark in. What do you think of Memnark? I think it's just absolutely nuts. Obviously, you play it alongside all of the usual suspects, your Jeweled Lotus, your Mana Crypt, your Soul Ring, your Thran Dynamo, 
all the fast mana make sure that you get to the ability as quickly as possible make sure that you can protect it uh as quickly as possible that casting cost is high but if you build the deck and it's good enough you should have no problem um using the liquid metal coating effect that's built into the card that's going to let you just gain control of whatever you convert into an artifact i mean that's like honestly it's a built-in all-in-one everything that you need is on the card which is why uh it's so popular and why it's on the meanest list of 2021 commanders yeah yeah exactly right memnark is a beast just like the first sliver jake the big daddy of all the slivers yes wooberg for a seven seven cascade sliver spells you cast have cascade spoiler alert the deck that you build with the first sliver is going to be all slivers and then you get the most value out of playing more slivers you just cascade into more slivers the way slivers work is once they all stack up on the battlefield all of their abilities go off they have a party and your opponents lose dylan church was the commenter that said the first sliver and i i commented that i agree with dylan i don't think that the first sliver and urza are on the same power level as commanders sure. however i think that if you're going to sit down at the table with a tribal deck anybody sitting down and saying hey i'm gonna pull out my sliver deck at that table is gonna get hated off the table first or at the very least the discussion is going to be pointed at you before we've all played our first land and so yeah. just slivers in general seem to get this really meanest tribe rap let me know down in the comments what you think the meanest tribe is if you're going to play a mean tribal deck but i think jake slivers is gonna be up there the thing about slivers is the synergy is all built into each other it's like you don't see that with other tribes like goblins and like vampires and stuff there's like synergies between those cards for sure but there's just something about slivers where they just tend to go off very quickly it's like goblins don't all buff each other in the same kind of way that slivers do right yeah exactly right and that's why slivers make the it's list five colors don't. man that's it it's five color next up we've got zur the enchanter a black a blue a white and one other for a flying one for human wizard Whenever Zur the Enchanter attacks, you may search your library for an enchantment card with CMC 3 or less and put it into play if you do shuffle your library. Jake, we had a good friend in our pod all through college have this as his premier deck. Right. And I got to tell you, it was always some bullshit. This <laughs> commander lends itself like Turgrid to a non-fun way of building and playing. This is not... I'm going to sit there and watch everybody do all their fun stuff. And we're going to see who's got all their EDH fun stuff today. And at the end, somebody will win. But it's not really about that. It's about having fun. Zer the Enchanter says, fuck all that. I'm here to win, bitch. It yeah. lends itself to this <laughs> min-max, controly, spiky, just absolute BS way of building, in my opinion. I put this one on the list, if you can't tell. This was my pick for Mina's Commander. You've said all of the technical analysis that I had to say about it. No, uh, I do like that you picked the cold snap art with the weird funky toe and the weird legs and limbs. This is the version that we played against in exactly. college. I do remember it, but yeah. Burned uh, very, in my brain. Very brutal card where it's like, you really just get your opponents to the point where they just want to scoop up because it's like prison effects, right? right you just kind of feel like all right the game is unwinnable god that nightmare art will forever be in my brain i had to pick that one jake jake let's talk about lathral blade of the elves yes now this commander oh man i definitely played this card and i did not feel like a good friend when i played it uh one green one black two other for lathral two three this card came out in recent years legendary creature elf noble menace whenever lathral blade of elves deals combat damage to a player create that many 1-1 one, one green elf warrior creature tokens that's right the amount of damage that lathral does create that many then it has a unique tap ability tap 10 untapped elves you control each opponent deals with the soren's vengeance they lose 10 life and you gain 10 life so huge huge uh life swing as far as you know your opponents are losing 30 if you're in a four person pod you're gaining 10 you do not gain 30 or else this card would just be insanely busted but yeah, yeah. i like that we end on one from our absolute beginnings of edh our past and then one of our most recent brutal popped out of control we've got a gameplay video of it on the channel go check that out of jake's and i don't playing like playing Lathral. aggro man like I, I don't i do not like playing aggro but the deck i was just like Jeez, yeah. this elf ball, like, whew. 
That's it for our 10 meanest commanders. Let's close the book. Thank you so much for watching. Let us know down below which ones we forgot. I already know we're going to get comments about send triplets, Jake. It wasn't on the list. That's right. And there were a lot of commanders that we really, really wanted to include, like um, the bear from Modern Horizons. Ayula? <laughs> Maybe next time. I'll keep we prepping the videos the if you keep being him and being... Ugh, come on. I can't even make my own fucking joke anymore. See you next time, warehouse.